committee. My name is Councillor Lisa Leach and I'm the chair of the committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the committee works smoothly as regards to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the table are for you tonight, to my immediate right is the council solicitor who will give advice to the committee on any procedural and legal matters that might arise. To my left are the council's planning officers, highway engineer and environmental health officer who will present the application this evening and give the technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the table are the elected members who will consider the application this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition, signed by 25 signatures or more, a representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition uh, for up to five days. In respect of items four and five, which are the um, Ingleborough Road and Solar Campus, we actually have five <coughs> petitions in total. Um, what I would um, ask is when the petitioners come up to speak, uh, the lead petition comes up to speak about those, if the people following on from them could just stick to anything additional, it would be very helpful. If the petition addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if the petition has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak for as long as they wish. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may follow, that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. Um, the order of tonight's agenda, because of the level of people here, um, we're going to take item four or five first of all, and then item nine, and then we'll revert to order. So four and five are the Ingleborough Road site and the Southern Campus, and nine is the Blockbuster Video Pipe. Um, if a site visit is requested and approved by the committee this evening, then the matter will not be discussed any further tonight. The matter will be discussed at a subsequent meeting once the planning committee has visited the site. Anyone here this evening for that item are welcome to leave the meeting if you so wish. You're also welcome to step. So um, that's item one. Okay. Um, so item one, the minutes, pages one to fourteen. Can I have somebody to approve those minutes, please? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, David. That, uh, the two items, um, item seven, the Eastern Refinery, North Road Eastern, will not be discussed this evening. So anybody who's here for that, if you wish to leave, then please feel free to do so. And also, uh, 
Item 10, which is 28 Sherwood Avenue, Rarely. Um, and again, if we will be discussing that this evening. Okay. Okay, the next item on the agenda then is item 4 in Mumbai Road, Tramnea. And um, this is a linked application with, uh, with item 5, which is the solar campus. Um, and I'm going to ask Matthew to do a presentation on both of these items, <coughs> uh, but we will actually have a separate um, vote on the items, although we will turn them together. Thank you. Thank you to you, Chair. Um, item four then first. Planning permission is sought for the residential development of land on Ingleborough Road. The application is in outline with all matters reserved for sub subsequent approval with the exception of means of access, the details of which are included with this application. The proposals seek permission for the erection of up to 90 dwellings. The site is currently designated as sports ground and playing fields and measures approximately three hectares. The site is currently laid out with two football pitches and trading areas in connection with Tramway Rovers Football Club. The site is not open or accessible for general use by the community or members of the public. The proposals for residential development are a departure from the development plan as policy RE6 requires the protection of sports grounds from development, subject to policy RE5. However, policy RE5 was not saved by the Secretary of State when commission was sought in 2007 for policies in the UDP to remain in force. Therefore, the National Planning Policy Framework represents the most up-to-date planning policy in that regard. As outlined on page 18 of your reports, the National Planning Policy Framework states that existing playing fields should not be built on unless an assessment has been made that shows such land is surplus to requirements or the loss of any playing fields would be replaced by equivalent or better provision in terms of quality and quantity in a suitable location or the development is for alternative sports and recreation provision. The proposals outlined are submitted in parallel with an application for the provision of replacement playing fields at the solar campus in Liso, the details of which are outlined within agenda, uh, agenda item 5. Those replacement facilities secure the protection and enhancement of existing sports pitches and provide for the replacement of Tramia Rover's existing provision and the creation of additional provision for community use. Therefore, the requirement to replace playing fields with equivalent or better quantity and quality in a suitable location and subject to equivalent or better, or better management arrangements is achieved by the proposals at the Solar Campus, the details of which will be secured via a Section 106 agreement as outlined on page 22 of your reports. Given the details of the Section 106 agreement include for requirements detailed by Sports England, together with conditions to secure other details, Sports England do not object to the loss of playing fields at Ingleborough Road. Although the application is in outline, an indicative layout demonstrating how up to 19 dwellings might be provided on the site and laid out has been submitted. A maximum of 90 dwellings is relatively low in density given the size of the site and residential development would be in keeping with the adjoining land uses. The site is surrounded by existing housing. With regards to the provision of affordable housing, a viability assessment has been independently appraised, which confirms that the development would not be viable if a requirement for affordable housing provision is imposed. However, the Section 106 agreement will include a mechanism to secure a contribution to affordable housing should land acquisition values rise significantly above that currently indicated. Representations have been made regarding the heritage value of the site and particularly the recording and, rem and remembrance of former pupils of the Birkenhead Institute who lost their lives in World War I. Although the site is not scheduled as an ancient monument within a conservation area or a listed building, 
and is not therefore in planning terms required to be given any special attention in terms of preserving or enhancing character and appearance. Regard has been given to the heritage interests of the site in these proposals. The memorial plaque will be located permanently to Hamilton Square and a memorial garden, including a memorial stone, will be included adjacent to Ingleborough Road, recognising the sacrifice of those lives lost during the war. Trees within the site are subject to a preservation order. Some trees with little or, or no immunity value, together with others in poor health, will be removed as part of these proposals. However, a commitment for replacement planting at a ratio of two per plot is outlined in the supporting documents, and any reserved matters application will seek to secure the proper landscaping of the site in this regard. Access to the site would be via Ingleborough Road at two points. It is considered that there is sufficient capacity within the local highway network to, contain, to cater for additional traffic that would be generated by these proposals. The site is also accessible by and well served by public transport. In summary then, the proposals are considered to provide a sustainable housing supply with no detrimental impact on the amenities of adjoining occupiers, the character of the area, or the, like, or the local highway network. The provision of replacement playing fields of equivalent or better quality and quantity in a suitable location with equivalent or better management arrangements is secured through linked proposals at the solar campus. The proposals are therefore recommended for approval, subject to a section 106 agreement, and there are a number of qualifying petitions, both in support and objection to the proposals. Uh, in terms of agenda item eight then, uh, five, sorry. This application seeks consent for the use of land at the solar campus to secure the provision of replacement playing fields for use by Tramia Rovers Football Club and the creation of pitches for use by the community. The application is linked to agenda item four. The application will provide for full, four full-sized football pitches, one junior academy pitch, one training area, and ancillary temporary changing facilities for use by Tramia Football Club. This element of the proposal secures the relocation and replacement of the club's facilities at Ingleborough Road. In addition, the application would provide two further full-size football pitches, a youth pitch and a training area for community use. The site is currently open grassland with some football pitches existing on the site. Although the site is located within the green belt, facilities for outdoor sport and recreation are considered appropriate development in the green belt. Any associated buildings will be allowed where they are essential for the use of the proposals, where their scale, site and appearance are appropriate to the setting of the area. The proposed temporary changing facilities are considered essential to support the use of the playing fields and are sited adjacent to the existing solar campus buildings, thereby minimising their impact. The pitches for use by Tramia Rovers will be on land that will be upgraded to allow for sport. This part of the site would be enclosed by some fencing and used solely by the club and in connection with their academy. Further pitches for community use are proposed. Currently, there are a number of pitches located centrally within the site, which are open to and used by the public. The new pitches will be closer to residential properties on Shackleton Road compared to the existing pitches, but it is not considered that this will result in such an impact as to warrant a refusal of planning permission, especially as the whole site is open to and accessible to the public at present. Sport England have, have assessed the proposals in terms of the provision of replacement playing fields and raised no objections, having regards to the Section 106 agreement that would be secured if permission is, is approved. The vehicular access to the site from Lisa Road would be widened to accommodate two-way traffic and to avoid any queuing onto Lisa Road. There are no objections to these proposals on highway grounds. In summary then, the proposals would have no detrimental impact on the character of the area or amenities of local residents. 
The proposals not only secure the replacement of facilities that will be lost at Ingleborough Road, but also represent an investment in sport and recreational facilities with the provision of, use of new pitches for the use by the community. The proposals are considered to be acceptable and subject to a Section 106 agreement are recommended for approval. Again, there are petitions of objection and in support of this application. Thank you, Matthew. Um, as Matthew said, we do have a number of petitions. Um, could I ask uh, if the objectors to the, uh, this application come forward to uh, the first person? Thank you.
It would be nice to have been consulted on what might be appropriate. After all, Mike Paddock's self-congratulatory heritage statement says that the effort may be appreciated by the public and in Stonians for years to come. What an advance. So we find ourselves where we are, and despite repeated and polite requests for meetings, nothing has been forthcoming. A difficult situation for members of the planning committee also. The planning officers have worked so hard with Tramway Roads over such a long time to come up with the best way of presenting this positively to committees without doubt. And yet I've seen nothing in their public files which suggests for one moment that they have tried to broker any talks over this incendiary matter, and that is a real puzzle to me. Can I just tell you how important And so we as, as old boys and years councillors have a take it or leave it situation. It's not that the plan doesn't have merit and lots of positive points, but it falls down in one vital way, which is the lack of scale and respect being shown to over 80 young men associated with our school who gave their lives in the pursuit of justice in the Great War. They serve in Flanders, Gallipoli, and onto East Africa, and one of them, as you're aware, was Wolf and Owen, whose memory should be particularly praised in this important time of anniversary. <coughs> if Tramway Rovers are playing the take it or leave it game, then I'm sorry to have to ask members to say leave it and come back with something that we can all be proud of. And I ask, I plead with members to reject this application. Thank you. Who actually lives in Hayes Drive 
So it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a clue why Chelmer Brokers, who's such a big club, cannot come forward to the residents and say, "This is our plans. This is what we can do." Why can't Why can't they come to the residents and say, "You know, hands up. This is what we want to do." So thank you very much. Okay. 